Hi everyone, uh, my name is Abby and I'm from Elite IB Tutors and um, I'm here to hopefully answer some questions you may have about resits, remarks, remoderation, um, everything you wanted to know about uh, this time of year after results come out and uh, what your options may be moving forward. Um, so please do feel free to get in touch um, by commenting with any questions you may have, um, whether they're really general, like what are resets and how do I do them, or whether it's a specific question about a given subject and whether you think it might be worth resetting or having it remarked. Um, your options, uh, if you do choose to reset or indeed if you don't. Um, hi, I think we have one viewer. Um, so uh, I was just saying this is an opportunity to um, learn more about resets, remarks, remoderation, and ask any questions you may have. Um, so uh, let's start by talking through what is going on at this point um, after results. Uh, so uh, results were released a week ago, well, a week ago to schools and six days ago to you as uh, students. And um, of course, that isn't very long at all, so um, it will still be quite a recent thing for you. Um, but uh, hopefully by now you've had a chance uh, to consider your results and consider what you wish to do if they are not what you were hoping for. And firstly, if that is the case for you, um, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, I know it can be incredibly disappointing, especially when you've been working towards that for two years. Um, but uh, all hope is not lost. Um, many people retake exams and um, do so uh, with great success um, and achieve the improvement they are hoping for. Um, and it, it can be a very beneficial thing. Um, but the first thing really is to consider your results and what you need in terms of your next steps. Um, so some people will just want to retake an exam for the sake of it because they feel they should have done better and they want a better grade. Um, but for most of you, the, the, key, um, the key aspect of concern here will be your university offer um, if you had applied uh, to start at university this coming uh, autumn term, so this September or October, um, because we know um, uh, that for many students, um, the first question on their minds is, can I still get into um, my university of choice if I had an offer for a given point score and I failed to meet that by a certain number of points? Um, so one of the most common inquiries um, that we get uh, around this time of year um, is students or their parents uh, ringing up saying that they had an offer for say 38 points and instead they achieved 35 points um, and they're wondering if there's any chance that, uh, that they can still gain admission to their chosen university. Um, so there are a few points to consider here. Um, firstly, hopefully, if you've accepted university offers, you have a firm choice and an insurance choice. Um, so the idea there is that the firm choice is the university you would most like to go to, um, and in many cases it will be one that has a slightly higher point score than your insurance choice, um, which is your backup option should you fail to um, achieve the offer for your firm choice. Um, so firstly, hopefully, um, there will there is still an opportunity for you to go to university this coming um, academic year if you wish to. Um, we'll come back uh, to the other situation where you can list both your offers later on. Um, but, oh, hello, we have, I think we have another person. Uh, hi, feel free to ask any questions you may wish to um, in the comment section here, um, whether it's general in nature or specific to a particular subject or a particular aspect of the subject. Um, but yes, going back to what I was saying, um, so let's say you have your, your, um, your firm choice and you miss it. Um, the first step is always to get in touch with the university and you should do so by phone really because you want um, the fastest response possible in this case, time is of the essence with resets. 
Um, so you need to ring them up and let them know your full situation uh, and see if they will still be willing to let you in. Um, so there are a number of outcomes here. Um, if you're lucky, they may be happy to let you in in spite of the fact that you have failed to meet the offer. Particularly if it's just by one point um, uh, and if it's if it's not in a subject that they have specified you need to achieve a particular grade in, then you may well still be able to gain admission with your schools as they currently are. Um, so that's of course what we hope for. Um, otherwise, they may not be able to give you um, a definite answer at this stage. So this can be really frustrating, but um, do bear in mind that IB results are released a lot earlier than those of some other qualifications. So um, for UK universities, um, the other main qualification to, to be thinking about is A-levels. Um, most students applying to UK universities uh, will be students from the UK who have done A-levels. Um, and A-levels results date isn't until mid-August. Um, so it's still over a month away. And on the whole, um, in fact, I can't really think of a situation where this wouldn't be the case. Uh, universities will receive more applicants from um, A-level students uh, than they will from IB students and therefore most likely will have made more offers to A-level students than to IB students. So you will be in a minor minority um, in terms of your application uh, to this particular university for this particular course. Um, and therefore they probably have a lot of other applicants who are also holding offers um, who have not yet got their results because a lot of them are A-level students. Um, so they may say that they will get back to you and give you a decision um, about uh, your point score and whether that's enough for them, but only when A-level results have come out um, because they're making way you up against A-level candidates and seeing whether any of them have missed their offers and whether they still feel you're a better candidate um, than, than um, some of the other A-level uh, offer holders. So that can be a really difficult position to be in because you then have this long summer of waiting and that can be really agonizing. But more frustratingly than that, um, if you're hoping to resit your exams in November, if, if necessary, um, you need to register for those November resits but no later than uh, the 29th of July, uh, which obviously is before A level results come out. So, in that position, there isn't really much you can do. You're kind of in this state of limbo um, where you may be able to get into your uh, your firm choice or indeed your insurance choice of university with your current grades that you don't know yet. Um, and so, there are a number of uh, routes you can take in that case. You can um, you may want to just forget about university and reset in any case and apply again this coming year. That's quite a lot to undertake, but it's something that's worth considering. Um, you might uh, want to look at places available through clearing, which we'll come back to. Um, or you might decide that you're going to wait um, until your university can give you um, a decision about your offer. Um, and then once they have given you that decision, um, if it's a yes, great, you can, go to, um, you can go to the university, you can start your course this year. But if they say no, um, your point score is, score is unfortunately too low for our requirements, um, then you may just want to reapply this coming year, um, either with your existing point score um, or reapplying, but also resitting so that you can improve that point score. Um, now in that case, by the time you find out your university's decision, when a level results come out, um, if they do make you wait that long, um, then you'll already have passed the deadline for registering for November exams, which as you may remember is the 29th of July. Um, so in that case, unfortunately you won't be able to retake in November, you'll have to retake in, um, in May. Uh, next May, so in almost a year, which can seem a bit of a pain because it means that the whole process drags on a lot longer, 
But there are a number of advantages to this. Um, firstly, the fact that it just gives you more time to prepare for your exams, uh, which can be really helpful, and means you can actually have a proper break this summer um, before restarting revision, whereas those preparing for um, the November resits, you've basically got to get straight back to it if you're really uh, committed to improving. Um, so there's that. Um, there's also um, the fact that it means that you're not doing resits at the same time as preparing your university application um, because um, the deadline, for the UCAS deadline um, for any courses that aren't Oxbridge or medicine is the 15th of January 2019. Uh, for Oxbridge and medicine, it is uh, the 15th of October, so even earlier. So if you're resitting but applying for any of those, you've got those and November resits going on at once. Um, but even if you're applying uh, for the January deadline um, and you're doing your resits in November, it might be quite a lot to think about while you're trying to work on your university application. Um, so it can be quite nice to just wait and spread it out um, and uh, do the resits in May. Um, in terms of deadlines for this, um, so if you took your exams this May and you want to retake next May, uh, you've of course got a bit longer to decide. Um, so there are a number of different deadlines with different fees. So the first deadline is coming up this November, uh, the 15th of November, and you can register for resets by then and get the lowest fees possible. Um, there is another deadline on the 15th of January next year, which is unfortunately the same as the UCAS deadline. Um, and then the final deadline uh, is the 15th of April next year. So if you're retaking in May next year, you can register as late as the 15th of April, but hopefully you will have decided long before that um, that, that you are retaking. Um, so those are all your options uh, if, you, um, if you have missed um, your firm choice but you're, um, and you're considering what to do next. But something that I touched upon and didn't go into more detail about was what happens if you miss your firm and your insurance choice? Um, uh, which some of uh, what I just talked about then will be applicable, so you may just want to retake uh, and indeed reapply. Um, but there is another option um, that you may wish to consider if, um, if you're certain you want to start at the university this autumn term and you don't want to take a gap year. Gap years have many um, positive qualities and can be an incredibly beneficial thing, can be used to to great effect. Um, I myself uh, took a gap year just because I couldn't decide what I wanted to do at university and um, worked two jobs uh, and studied a bit more and found it a very uh, useful time, but of course it's completely up to you. Um, also, just to interrupt myself, do feel free to ask any questions and where I'm talking at you, uh, so do comment with any queries or concerns you may have about the reset, remark or remoderation process, um, I'd be more than happy to answer anything you may want to ask. Um, so anyway, back to what happens if you've missed your firm and your insurance choice. Um, and in that case, um, as I say, you can resit, you can reapply, um, but you may want to consider UCAS clearing, um, which is a system whereby you can um, continue submitting applications uh, to UK universities where they have courses that still have space, um, which uh, ha can be a very good way of securing a university place when things didn't go quite to plan in your exams. Um, something to bear in mind is that there's no guarantee what will be available, um, whether a university or indeed a course that you like will be available, so I wouldn't recommend it as something to rely on. Um, but some people do get very lucky and find courses that are just really well suited to them, so it's definitely um, worth exploring. Um, if you go on the UCAS website, just type in UCAS Clearing, um, there are a lot more, there's a lot more information there. Um, but I would also suggest, um, for, for anything that I've just talked about, um, having a look at uh, the Resits FAQ on um, our resources page. If you just type in um, Elite IB, Resits FAQ, it will come up, um, and that's a really helpful guide to basically everything you could want to know about resets, although I'm sure there'll be more questions, and that's why I'm here to answer them now. Um, okay, so 
clearing is an option if you miss both your offers, but you don't want to resit and or reply. Um, so let's talk a bit more about the IB resits themselves um, and why you might want to do them. Because um, another common question that we get is, do you think it's worth resetting this subject? Um, can I improve by this much? Um, is this too much to take on? Um, so something to consider first is what went wrong in your exams and what you hope uh, to rectify in, in resitting. Um, the first thing to bear in mind um, is that you should by now have received your, your mark breakdowns. Um, uh, so uh, in addition to the overall grades, you should get a breakdown of what you scored in each component of each subject. Um, and that can be a really good way of assessing where things went wrong. So was it the case uh, that you underperformed significantly in a particular exam. Um, did you anticipate that that was going to happen? Was that a real surprise? Um, was it the exams themselves or was it actually um, the IAs, the internally assessed uh, components? Um, you may want to consider um, in cases where uh, you, you, you've achieved a result that you don't feel reflects your abilities, um, do you consider the possibility of a remark or um, indeed a remoderation um, of internally assessed work? Um, so this is something that you should you should discuss with your school um, and with the specific subject teachers um, because they will be best placed to advise you here. But marking is a very subjective process um, in many cases, not for things like multiple choice questions where there is just one correct answer and that can be marked for the computer. So you can't get those remarked. Um, but wherever you're writing an answer, um, and especially with essay-based subjects and indeed with the extended essay and um, TOK, um, we know that there is a lot of variability um, in the marking. Uh, and um, we, we have had quite a number of people come to us saying that they'd expected to achieve They've been expecting to achieve an A in, the, in their TOK and they ended up getting a C, for example. Um, and anytime there's that subjectivity there, there is the possibility of um, you ending up with a result that's really not what you expected. And that is definitely something worth discussing with your teacher because they have hopefully um, been overseeing your work for almost two years. So they will be able to say, yes, I think you should have achieved that or uh, I would have expected you to get this, and I don't think this is your fault. And if that's the case, then um, it may be worth applying uh, for, for a remark. Um, so that is something that the IB coordinator will have to apply for on your behalf. You cannot specifically request that. Um, there, uh, there is also more information about this in our resits um, FAQ. And if you have any more specific questions, I would encourage you um, to get in touch with us at contact at elitib.co.uk, um, which is our email address, uh, because I know that uh, there is definitely more to say here than can feasibly be said um, in the next few minutes. Uh, so, remarks are definitely an option, um, something that your school has to agree to, and uh, they need to have good grounds uh, for doing so. Uh, similarly, with Internal, uh, internal assessments. Um, there is quite a common uh, situation of a whole cohort within a school being marked down significantly in their internal assessments um, because these are internally marked but then externally moderated. Um, but if a teacher feels that's unjust, then again they can request a, re uh, a remoderation. As I said, any more questions? If you have any specific questions, you can ask them now in, uh, in the comments. Um, but otherwise you're very welcome to email us or call us. Um, and then let's talk about resets and the actual process of um, organising them. Um, so um, you will need to be registered with uh, an IB World School um, in order to reset your exams. So it's all very well deciding that you're going to reset and getting ready to study over the summer and being ready prepared, but 
before you do any of that, you absolutely need to make sure you're registered by the deadline, which, as I've said a couple of times before, is the 29th of July. So that is fast approaching. Um, so you have about two and a half weeks left to sort that out. Um, so a lot of students do encounter difficulties in um, in trying to find a school where, where they can register. Um, so the first port of call should, of course, be your school where you took your ID first time round. Um, so I would recommend getting in touch with them at your earliest convenience if you, you've not done so already. Um, but unfortunately, some schools are unable to offer November exam sessions because they are expensive to run if they predominantly or exclusively do uh, May exam sessions. So they may ask you to wait until the next May uh, to resit, or they may not even uh, allow you at all, unfortunately, um, which uh, can be incredibly frustrating. But if you're not able to resit at your existing sc uh, school, um, either in November or at all, uh, the next step is to get in touch with any local schools you can. Um, so you may be aware of some schools in your local area, but otherwise um, I would look up, uh, I would type in find an IB school, and on the IB website there's a section uh, where you can search through all of the IB world schools by region, um, and it will give you their contact details as well, so you can get in touch with their coordinators. And, uh, and see whether they'll be willing to take you on. Um, now, unfortunately, this uh, this IB website doesn't have any function to search uh, by whether a school offers resets, whether they offer November exams. So um, you are just going to have to um, uh, spend some time getting in touch with the schools yourself. And that does involve um, predominantly bringing schools up. Uh, you can email, but Time is of the essence, as I said, so do try to get um, the most immediate response you can. Um, unfortunately, a lot of schools just aren't um, receptive to, to external candidates, so people coming from one school wishing to retake their exams at another school. Um, but do persevere. Um, uh, I've spoken to many students in the past week who have, who have called me in a state of slight panic and frustration, and unfortunately this is all you can do. In this case, you may have to look a little bit further afield um, uh, beyond um, your county or your region, um, for example. But, but it is, of course, worthwhile um, if you get the opportunity to receive your exams, and that's what you want to do. Um, so yes, do keep trying. Um, do also be aware, um, this particularly applies to uh, private schools in the UK. A lot of them will close for summer now, and with the 29th of July deadline, you can't really make any arrangements uh, before that time um, if they're closed for summer. Um, so do, do just keep phoning up. Um, and the worst case scenario is that you can't retake this November and you have to retake in May, which is very annoying, but it, it is a possibility and it's something that, that many have done successfully. So um, do remember there is always that option too. Um, and then in terms of actually approaching your resets, um, I think you need to be quite realistic with yourself about what went wrong before um, and how you can change that. So you will need to formulate a really um, quite specific action plan. And the good thing is that, that for many of you, you won't be retaking all six of your subjects. You may only be retaking one or two. Um, so that does mean you can focus on those subjects in a way that you've never had a chance to in the IB. Of course, the IB asks you to do six subjects. That is quite a lot of subjects, um, So uh, that which can be quite overwhelming. Whereas being able to just focus on one or two is a really refreshing change. And um, uh, you do have, I, I suppose at the moment, uh, you currently have um, almost four months uh, to revise, so that, that is quite a lot. Um, if you think about it, uh, if you were at this stage in your IB first time round, if you took your exams in May, that would put you in kind of mid-January time, uh, when some people hadn't even started revision. So um, if you're starting revision now, you're in a good place uh, to, to really make some improvement. Um, and I would set quite specific goals for yourself. Um, know what you need, know uh, what grades you need to achieve, um, what you need to do to get that. So um, look at uh, the assessment criteria again 
if you, if you didn't before, use your syllabus. Um, uh, hopefully you haven't thrown away your notes, um, but if you have, now is a really good time to make a brand new set of notes, maybe clearer and, and uh, more comprehensive than before. Um, and I mentioned that it can be really good to focus on one or two subjects. So if you're, if you're planning to retake quite a number, maybe say more than three, um, it may be worth considering spreading them out and doing some in uh, November and some in May, um, which, is, which is possible. Um, do bear in mind that you only have three exam sessions in which to do uh, your IB. So you have already had one exam session in May. Um, if you then do some of your subjects in November, redo some of your subjects in November, and intend to redo other subjects next May, uh, that will be all of your exam sessions. So if you want to retake exams you retook in November another time, uh, you'll have to do them in May, next May, or not at all. So if you're spreading your retakes over November and May, next May, then that is it for your IB exams, and you can do no more IB exams ever, which is probably quite refreshing um, uh, to hear. Um, but yeah, it is worth considering spreading them out um, uh, and, and then really being able to focus uh, as appropriate. Um, and then people do often ask how much improvement you can realistically make. And it's impossible to, to give a specific uh, number of grades by which you can improve because revision just doesn't really work that way. We can't generalize about how much one can or can't achieve. Fundamentally, um, the, the onus is still with you. So if you know you want to go up by two grades, that is going to mean putting in some hard work and really being quite self-critical and thinking what you did wrong in your exams, which I know can be a horrible thing to have to think about because when you leave an exam, you probably never want to think about it again. But really do think about where you might have gone wrong, either in your approach to revision or in the exams themselves, and how you can fill in those, fill in those gaps and um, resolve those errors. Um, so do be almost a harsh of yourself, um, which I wouldn't normally say. I think it's really important to take care of yourself and uh, to be very healthy in your approach to studying, to revision. But um, you do need to be quite rigorous um, because, of course, there are fees associated uh, with retaking. So you want to get your money's worth. And also you, you want to make it worth your while to perhaps take a gap year or you know, postpone uh, your entry to university because this is, you are taking time out of your life to do these resets. Um, so, so do make it worthwhile. Um, we, uh, we have supported quite a number of students in uh, their resets before, both um, through private tuition, um, either online or face-to-face, -face, um, and also through our reset courses, um, uh, run, which run in October and are a really effective way of kind of finalizing uh, your revision um, putting those finishing touches on the months of revision you've done beforehand, um, really focusing on past paper questions and making sure your knowledge application um, it is, is the best it can be. Um, because we know that a really common error that some students make the first time around is having learned the information really, really thoroughly, um, but then when it comes to the exam, not knowing how to apply that to a particular... Sorry, it's very noisy outside. Um, not knowing how to apply that to a particular exam question. Um, so that's something that, that we can very we, we can very readily target um, in a very pinpointed manner. Um, so do let us know if any of that is, inter is of interest to you, um, either the private tuition or courses, um, or if you have any other questions at all, um, we'd be more than happy to answer them. Um, as I said, there's far more that can be said about resets uh, than can be achieved in, in a half hour video, really. Um, and where I didn't get any questions this time around, but I'm very open to questions, so um, we would encourage you uh, to email us at uh, contact at eliteib.co.uk. Uh, we can find out more about the services we offer and also just ask us any specific questions you may have at all. Um, if you're interested um, 
more specifically in our courses, um, such as our November Research course, um, you can email my colleague Ebba at uh, courses at eliteiv.co.uk. Um, and finally, as a reminder, we do have an excellent um, resource on our website in the resources page, uh, which is our Resits uh, FAQ, where you can find out answers to some other questions that I may not have touched upon here, or that many other students may, uh, may have asked, and um, that you may also be thinking about. Um, but I'd like to take this opportunity to firstly congratulate you on making it through the IB and to say I'm sorry if you didn't achieve uh, the results you were hoping for. Um, and best of luck in your research if you do decide to undertake them and in any subsequent university applications and I promise you it will be worth it. Um, so uh, do get in touch if you have anything more you'd like to know. Thanks, bye!